Hey guys, welcome back to AFK Journey. In today's video, we're going to go through the updated tier list for May. But before we get into it, I've been traveling and I haven't got around to do uh, the giveaway for hitting 25,000 subscribers. So as always, massive shout out to you guys. We're going to do a $100 giveaway in this video. Just be subscribed and leave a comment and you will go into the draw. I'd appreciate a like too, but I can't monitor it. So you really don't have to. But uh, once again, just be subscribed and leave a comment. You'll go into the draw. We'll announce it about a week away in a community post. But let's get into the tier list now why i'm covering this i will do this like as a monthly thing if we have any major updates as well i will revise a tier list uh, or anything like that if we think for instance the season we're going to have characters with seasonal skills that will be its own thing completely but we will cross that bridge when we come to it and that will take some time to really iron things out but i will definitely give you guys impressions on characters and abilities with the seasonal abilities when they do come out but just keep in mind this is for the base version of the game not for the seasonal version of the game which is going to start getting confusing but once again we will cross that bridge when we come to it now we're over on here on pride Within. if you want to check it yourself uh you can uh just i'll leave it linked in the description but i want to take a look at the change log uh some things they've changed since last time we looked at it which was during flora bell's released now in this one i do really like the changes that they've made so we've reworked the story tier list it used to be it used to be like uh, early, mid, and late game. Uh, now we rate the characters in their performance before obtaining exclusive equipment and after exclu the exclusive equipment, which I think is the best way to go ahead and rate them. We've also added a trial of abyss category where we rate uh, maxed characters by their performance in the mode uh, under big level deficit 100 plus. So basically, we've got if you want to consider it this way we've got pre-ex is kind of like the early game then we've got after ex which is kind of like the mid game and then we've got trial abyss which is kind of like the late game but i do like the defining factors for these uh, and how they're defining them so we'll look through that uh then we have we've uh this one happened about a week before that we've added the battle drills category this rating averages the performance of all characters in both trash modes and against bosses so it favors characters who can deal both aoe and single target damage so this is gonna be an interesting one when we do look at it as well uh, and once again over here we did get scarleta getting a boost in story late which is now would be considered the um trial of abyss because she is doing amazing things over there but those are the updates that we've had so let's go ahead and let's take a look at it now once again they they've done this tier list site uh really really well you've got the table mode if you want to look at characters and their functionality in different stages you can see uh rainy honestly i don't get much use out of him uh without his exclusive equipment it is tech situations but it also depends on how your account looks. But once again, you can look at all these different categories for an individual character and check them out as you will. Now, bossing, I'm going to leave bossing. I'm not really going to discuss bossing too much because I feel like that's pretty standardized and um, it's more like, you know, early game, if you're building Cecilia and Odie, use them. Once you get like Corrin and Merrily, you start using them. I've got guides for all the bosses as well like that. And if you want to dive into bosses, you can do that as well. But once again, they've added battle drills and they've added Trial of Abyss. So I want to take a look at those one specifically over in the pyramid mode and take a look at it now once again story pre-ex and post-ex i really do like this so once you start unlocking those characters and their exclusive equipment and you're curious if you know this character becomes good with their exclusive equipment you can definitely check it out here and you can check it out the difference in how good they are between not having their exclusive and having their exclusive in the story over here so i do really like this feature i think it's quite fantastic but then we go into trial of abyss now trial of abyss is um you know you're real hard i, I still consider it kind of like an afk stage push type mode because the fundamentals are very really similar but it's like sort of that end game mode that we have at the moment so take a look here like the scarlita from what i've seen people have doing been doing mad things with like scarlita like iron carolina comps but running like scarlita in them uh running the iron scarlita with like granny as well as the tank and that's why you do see granny so high up here in the trial of abyss because she is doing fantastic things and once again antandra this is why i put antandra on my wish list because not because of Trial of Abyss, but because with the seasons coming in, I feel like Antandra is going to have that extra value because in this AFK stage pushing type format, she is excelling really well. Now, I feel like Thorin is a little hard done by getting dropped down so far, uh, not so far, but down to S uh, away from Granny. I do think it's a matter of as we evolve comps, like at the moment, the Granny comp seems to be performing the best with Iron in Trial of Abyss. As that changes, as we find new comps, the tanks will just adjust to that but Thorin don't see him down in S and go oh he's a he's a he's a bad unit Thorin is still an absolutely god 
god tier unit same with rainier especially when we look at him at max max investment as well he's good in so many places of the game but the rest of this for trial of abyss makes a lot of sense we can go through it now dionel has massive damage but once again this is considering him at a max investment and same with scarlita now scarlita does so clutch because she has the knockoff the insta kill which is absolutely fantastic but i'm not going to go too deep into those two because i still think that's very niche considering a lot of free play players are still working on rainier and you're not really going to have these two too well built yet so when we look at the damage dealers over here Cecilia pretty much self-explanatory she's been good through the whole campaign she's like that campaign specialist type unit because she does have the control she has the damage and she also has the added survivability by the way that carlisle can tank she's just sort of cater made to that type of format until we get massive power creep she will always be really solid in that type of format then we have arden arden for his damage dealing capacity and also his controlling in the iron comps fantastic and Odie, dude once this guy gets mythic plus and he starts one tapping things dude is an absolute savage so i don't think we need to touch too much on Odie. Carolina goes in that Iron comp uh, for the massive damage after they're all grouped with that just steady AoE pressure that she has. Coco, once again, another character that can be clutch in Dream Realm in, super, in certain situations, but she is another character that is very well catered towards AF, uh, AFK stage in campaign, Trial of Abyss, whatever you want to look at it, those types of stages, because she is giving you such great survivability, especially when we look at her max, that's past exclusive equipment, meaning that she's also going to be providing those extra shields which is going to be another fantastic thing. Rowan, once again, the continuity of these characters between early game and Trial of Beasts is, is very much the same because Rowan, we get potions, which means we do get to heal uh, and deal with bursts from enemy teams, but also we get that energy potion, which allows a lot of the times we'll be in an Antandra who will get the energy potion to get her ult off first so that she can then mitigate all that damage, which is absolutely fantastic. Smokey, Enough said, healing is amazing. If you get to the third ult with the exclusive equipment, you're going to melt the enemy team as well. Absolutely fantastic. And Tandra, once again, just like probably the, the most sturdy tank in the game. Um, you know, she's got her torn. She's got a tiny bit of damage, not crazy, but it's just her survivability and protection for allies that makes her really, really nice. Also, she can provide that ally with some extra energy, which can be certain, certainly clutch once you get her exclusive equipment. Then we have Granny. Granny is that one that provides CC. She's also super tanky, has self-healing as well. And once again, is Synergy really well with Iron in this end stage in those Scarlet teams as well. As we move on past that, Florabelle, once again, she's a character that I think is very, very similar to Cecilia um, and just a, an all-round functional character. Uh, I, I, I kind of just group these into the same situation. They feel very, very similar. Brion, I honestly don't know too much about Brion in the end game. Uh, I haven't tested him enough myself, um, but obviously he's getting some performance. I know he can help out in those Iron teams as well, so that's probably it. Same with Parisa. Uh, she's a really nice substitute unit into the Iron Carolina teams. She does have pretty decent damage, um, good support as well. Damien and Hewan, once again, part of those core teams. Hewan actually a really, really fantastic uh, survival unit to help your team survive. What, especially once you've got EX, that means she's going to get her energy up faster, which means she's going to heal faster. And you lose the early game like downside of Hewan, which is her slow energy recovery, because you can get that ult off faster. So now she's more effective at keeping the team alive. Uh, Damien, once again, that energy recovery, absolutely fantastic. And Thorin, no, mo no more need to say anything about Thorin. He's an absolute monster. Then we start getting into the more niche units down here that I'm not going to go too deep into. Uh, Brutus, once again, he drops down so far because once you consider every character to be maxed, uh, you know, your single copy of Brutus is kind of functioning similar to your max copy of Brutus. Um, so he does fall out because once you've got these types of characters maxed, you lose such need for Brutus. Maybe sometimes you bring him in a, as a tech bait for something like um, an enemy Vala or something like that. But in general, that's kind of where we're looking. Then we have Corrin and Merrily. Just keep in mind for a lot of players that are building up Corrin and Merrily, once you get them to that mythic plus range they become greater bosses but also at that investment they do start to have more effectiveness in campaign if you don't have as many characters built to the same level of them so you can get some use out of it we got igor who's just annoying as hell and can be played in some annoying immortal comps with Nero and stuff like that like in a pinch lucius i actually like this rating for lucius i think he's a very underrated unit in his campaign usage but once again the problem with lucius is even if he's a good unit you're not going to um pick him over corin and merrily and like campaign is like the only effective place that he can be used and 
that's pretty much it. But even his knockback can be super clutch. But once again, the problem is trying to invest into Lucius is just a losing game. So that's why he is sitting down there. And that's the bulk of the Trial of Abyss that I wanted to look at. Once again, just think of this as like real hardcore AFK stage pushing that type of format of combat and those units that bring control tankiness survival anything like that along with their damage um, are going to be fantastic in these type of modes normally characters that are raw damage aren't as strong as characters that have extra support when we look at something like Cecilia we got Arden who's got the extra control we got Carolina who's got the extra control we got Iron who's more of a grouping unit anyway Skeleta who and Dionel like I mean they're celestial so they're going to have extra advantages um but we do have obviously Odie in there but Odie he does bring pretty much just damage but dude his executes are savage so that's why he does get in there but let's jump over into battle drills and take a look at battle drills once again if you want a quick look at Dream Realm it's pretty staple through the early game, most people are going to be using Cecilia, uh, Odie, Kruger, Coco, Smokey, and Thorin. Those are going to be the main units. I know I listed six there, um, but you know, you're going to rotate through those in some formation for most of your teams. Then as you start building up Merrily and Corrin, they will start replacing your DPS in those teams, and you're pretty much going to be running the same thing. And then once you get a Rainier to Mythic Plus, he's going to start subbing into those teams. And that's pretty much what you're looking at. Bossing is fairly stable at this point, uh, with each uh, boss having their own little nuanced differences that you can uh, go in and dive deeper into. But essentially, that's what we're looking at over there. PvP, once again, we are still in that Iron meta, um, and that's where it's sort of sitting. I, on my account, we're still in the Cecilia meta, uh, where everyone's just trying to get the Cecilia ult and then clap the enemy team. Uh, Val is still doing big things for me where I'm at, but once again, once you do get to those heavily built accounts, we are looking at that Iron meta still being firmly in place. So, Battle Drills was the other one I wanted to look at. So, this one's a very interesting one. I like looking at Battle Drills. I think it's a fantastic thing. Once again, with Battle Drills, we do have um, enemies where... Uh, sometimes okay so we got three different formats of enemies we got the boss enemies whereas whether it's the little boss or the big boss normally single target damage is going to be priority then after that we have the spawning ads where you've got to kill what is it 10 enemies and as you kill some they spawn or is it 15 whatever it is and they keep spawning as you kill them and then we have the final one which is five enemies and as you like you've just got to bring down those five enemies you know sometimes one enemy dies before the rest and then everyone keeps attacking those are our three formats so units that can do good aoe along with good single target are going to be prioritized here and dnl falls into that category he's just a damage focused unit and he can deal massive damage his bossing damage isn't top tier but the damage he brings to the rest of it and his ability to deal good bossing damage like okay bossing damage uh that's what gets him up here Odie, Odie's fantastic the one where they with the ads continually spawn he's just going to poison kill them generate his energy poison kill them generate his energy he does it fantastic we know in general even though he's probably not the exact same as someone like uh merrily in bossing damage he's still a fantastic boss damage dealer so he does have that single target damage capabilities as well um and so that is where we look to Odie. And he can spread his poison damage quite nicely as well for those five enemy battles on top of that. Tamisha is a very interesting one. Really, really strong at dealing with the adds with her movement. Now, her ad, um, her usage in the adds is going to outweigh her usage against bosses. But because we do have two, um, you know, like AOE focused type formats and she can have that manipulation as well. She's an absolutely great unit, but she will need that investment to reach this rank. Uh, Rainier, once again, um, for him, normally I take him off of auto because on the track, mobs i don't want him to be banishing enemies because i want to deal as much damage as i can in that time uh but besides that once again for bosses he's fantastic also what you can use is use his swap to uh get the healing investment onto one of your allies which can then help keep them alive as well smoky enough said good all round just smoky smoky that N enough said we don't need to go too deep into that uh brian once again he has that additional power he, he's not a character i am the most uh close with so i'm going to avoid speaking too much on brian but from what i've heard from the end game people who have built him is that he is just one of those characters that's just reasonable across the board he's not broken but he's not trash and that's kind of the general vibe i get out of him um so see ya we all use her uh, at least most of us did especially as free to play because you get the free copies she's good at that she got good aoe damage she can help control those enemies as well to avoid taking too much damage and then she's got respectable boss damage it's not crazy but it's okay and especially early on uh, a lot of people will still be using her as their main dps florabelle i'm just gonna slap her in that same card category uh corin 
helps with sustain, which is really good, but also once he's got his exclusive equipment, he helps with the damage as well, which is going to be fantastic. In this one, his ult does have the spin, so it's a bit of AoE as well. So he does just synergize really well with this stuff in general. Then we have Reese. Reese is an interesting one. Now, I've been using Reese on my account at one copy in Battle Drills. Actually, does reasonable amounts of damage considering how low invested he is. Um, and that's due to that AoE that he does bring uh, and his disruption. I don't think he's as great on the boss fights, but I could be wrong on that. Uh, Seth just has good killing capacity with that ramp up damage on adds, but also fantastic for bosses, especially once you're in execute range. And we can definitely say the same thing about Vala. Once you get bosses into execute range, she is going to do fantastic. Cassidy, really good for manipulating enemy positions as well uh, with the wave, but also for buffing allies just around great unit. Parisa, once again, uh, good in the Euron team for the, the trash mobs and stuff like that, but also respectable damage in bosses. And Shakir falls into that same category. He can get his life still up and he can survive against all those waves of adds as like a tank slash DPS if you've got a bit of investment. Coco, enough said about Coco. She's just an all-round great unit, helpful for buffing, helpful for sustains. She's more of an offensive sustaining unit, but not as offensive as Smokey once he has his exclusive equipment because that, that exclusive equipment is just going to melt things. And then we've got Thorin, a tank that also offers plenty of damage and can also get himself self-sustained by linking himself to an ally with his exclusive equipment is fantastic. Then we jump down to these sorts of units uh, and these units fall off because they don't excel in both ranges. Uh, Merrily, I'd probably put Merrily up almost uh, just because she does have that amazing boss damage uh, and she can actually clear ads not too bad, uh, but not ridiculous. It's probably because she takes time to ramp up her damage and you're trying to kill the trash mobs as quickly as possible to refund our points. So that does kind of make sense. Uh, Miral, Miral is actually reasonable single target damage um, and great AoE, but the problem is you're not going to put her on a wish list just for this, so she stays down. Uh, then the Carolina and Irons. Once again, these units fantastic for the trash mobs, but just fall off in the bossing. So if you're looking at trash mob application, these guys would probably be S+, plus, but because they just don't have this what, what it takes in bosses, they drop off. We look to someone like Kruger. Kruger, once again, fantastic for bossing, but not so useful in the trash waves. And that's the kind of region we're looking at. Granny, good tank, but doesn't have the damage of Thorin, stuff like that. Huon, uh, good support, but not quite enough to match up to some of these units up here with what they offer offensively to the team as well. So that's the kind of stuff we're looking at over in Battle Drills. I'll probably do a more in-depth Battle Drills video, but I kind of want to get my account more progressed and have more stuff to show you guys before we do that, when we look at key strategies like three units and stuff like that. Um, but that will be in the future when people are sweating a bit harder on the Battle Drills. But but that is going to be it for our tier list. Once again, you can come over here uh, to Pride when you can check it out in any format that you want uh, to go ahead and check out the characters in general. Once again, it's a tier list. It's subjective. Don't take it as like the be all end all. If you enjoy something, go ahead and play it and have fun because it's a game at the end of the day. And once again, don't forget to be subscribed and leave a comment to go into the giveaway. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you have an awesome day and I look forward to seeing the next one. Cheers.